Okay, hold on. I have to take a step back here. We are fighting a Halo 3 Scarab on a Halo 4 level during the events of Halo Combat Evolved. Hey, Jarek here, and I'm at the Clackamas Town Center in a suburb of Portland, Oregon. You may wonder why I'm out here in the suburbs. Okay, well, Happy Valley is more an extension of Southeast Portland, but that's because I'm going to Dave & Buster's. At this point, you're probably asking, but Jarek, you live in Portland. There are so many good bar arcades to go to. You could go to Quarter World and then explore Hawthorne afterward. You could go to Wonderland, which is built in an old theater. Or you could go to one of the more well-known arcades on the entire West Coast, Ground Control, taking up near a city block in downtown. Why would you go to Dave & Buster's? Well, that's because they have a Halo game that breaks my mind with a complete mix of different Halo assets from different Halo games. Let's take a look at a screenshot from one of their own trailers. Clearly, we're seeing Halo Comet Evolved Anniversary assets in the level with possibly Halo Reach models. It's hard to tell. Halo Comet Evolved Anniversary used Reach's textures and re-rigged them to the original CE models, so it could be one of the two. And Halo 3's Assault Rifle model, but with a 60 round mag. This is very tame for this game. But okay, I'm getting really far ahead of myself. What is this? Well, this is an arcade cabinet almost exclusive to Dave & Buster's. I've seen it laying around in malls elsewhere occasionally, but it's very rare to find it elsewhere. When I first saw this cabinet, I was really surprised. I didn't know it existed for one, and two, it's really high quality. It is very well built with lit up halo rings surrounding the entire cabinet, two vibrant screens, loud bassy audio, soft seats that feel almost like car seats, and a very responsive light gun. This light gun only has three buttons, shoot, throw grenade, and reload. Reloading actually plays an animation on screen, by the way, it doesn't just dip the gun out of frame and come back loaded. This light gun also allows you to shoot the second screen, which is pretty neat. This game is intended for co-op with up to four different people. Most people have their days off on the weekend, but I didn't want to go to Dave & Buster's on the weekend and try to record something when it would be very crowded. So instead I went on a Monday when Dave & Buster's was fairly dead, and thankfully one of my friends just so happens to have Monday and Tuesday off. Hey Kai, say hi. Bonjour. I didn't say be French. If you're only playing with one, two, or three, the empty slots will be filled up with AI, which is actually useful. Now, I recorded this cabinet with two different cameras and a microphone. I have my GoPro on my head, my regular camera sitting down on a tripod beside me, and a lav mic on my chest to try to pick up the best audio I could get. Unfortunately, I'm not going to use much of this audio for two reasons. The first one is that a lot of this audio has music that is in YouTube's content ID system. For example, 117 from Halo 4. Awesome song, but it will immediately get picked up. The second one is that since this is loud, bassy audio, it doesn't exactly get picked up great on even a lav mic. And also, the light gun has pretty heavy vibration, so this is what you would be hearing most of the time. So yeah, we'll just get to listen to Halo music while this is playing in the background. If you're really curious about this game and want to see more, I've uploaded a full long play with both camera angles to my second channel. I'll link that in the top right. Also, if you just want to see me goofing around in video games, no serious content, that channel is kind of just a Let's Play channel. It's where I go to dump non-serious footage. No! <laughs> Quit! Anyway, Halo Fireteam Raven. Let's go by this level by level. You play as, surprise, Fireteam Raven, ODSTs. But what blew my mind about this game, aside from the amalgamation of assets from everything, was the fact that the story takes place throughout the events of just Halo Combat Evolved. On the first level, you're defending the Pillar of Autumn, and it mostly uses Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary assets. You start with the base assault rifle, which is fitting for an ODST. This thing feels pretty good, and it does exactly what you would expect. Fighting elites and grunts seem to have roughly the same amount of health they would have in regular Halo games. Eventually, you'll even get to use turrets to see the space battle happening outside of the Pillar of Autumn while all of this is going on. And that's actually kind of awesome, because you never got to see that in Combat Evolved, at least not much. You'll soon replace your assault rifle with the plasma pistol, which I think this is the Halo 2 Anniversary campaign model. I'm not sure, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, this thing basically just functions like a pistol. It doesn't really function like a plasma pistol. You can't charge it and the reload button just plays the overheating animation, but it doesn't actually overheat. You just need to reload it like any other gun. Kind of disappointing to be honest and definitely a downgrade over the assault rifle. And hey look, there's even a cameo from Chief himself.
That is the cutscene that plays at the end of the first level of Halo Combat Evolved. That's some fan service and I'm here for it. That's just so cool. And damn, you already get a shotgun. I think it's using the Halo 2 Anniversary shotgun model. Again, not sure, someone correct me if I'm wrong. At first I thought this shotgun sucked because it didn't seem to do much damage. And then I realized it's slam fire. You can just hold the trigger down. And in a video game sense, it's practically fully automatic. Yeah, this thing is nuts. And the level ends by you getting into drop pods and dropping down onto the Halo ring. It's a great introduction. You get a variety of weapons, get some space combat, get to see a variety of enemy types. And Raven Squad also keeps track of your score to determine who is the winner at the end of every level. Let's win this mission. Level 2, Rubble. Are those Halo 4 assets? Maybe Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer assets? I don't know. Anyway, Raven Squad's goal here is to prevent the Covenant from reaching the crashed Pillar of Autumn. You'll be on the back of a Warthog fighting the Covenant on foot, ghosts, banshees, and even wraiths for the first time. But of course, your Warthog gets flipped, who could have ever seen that coming, and you go on foot. This level will also give you a rocket launcher, and it has infinite ammo, and you never have to reload it. You repel the attack, move on. Alpha base. The whole concept of this level is that you're interrupted during a meeting and you need to repel the covenant. That's it. It's, it's just that. Again, I think it's using Halo 4 assets for the level. And hey, you get to fight buggers. These are probably the hardest things to actually shoot, but really nothing in this game is that hard to shoot. Nor does it feel very unfair. You also get a plasma rifle for the first time which functions kind of in the same way as the plasma pistol. It doesn't have an overheat mechanic. It doesn't really function like you would expect it to as a plasma rifle. It pretty much just functions like an assault rifle, except for when you reload it, it does an overheat animation. It will never cool down. You will always have to reload it. So basically it functions like a regular gun. A little disappointing, but eh, it's still the plasma rifle. And hey, hunters show up. This is the first mini boss in the game. To prevent damage, a health bar will pop up above their head as they're charging their fuel rod cannon. Very basic concept, but it works. This is also the first time you get to use a shade turret, which is for some reason way better than in the actual games and much better than the Warthog turret. The section was actually a lot of fun. They give you tons of different cinematic angles to have firefights. Yeah, real smart of the Covenant. Try to drop your troops right in front of a turret. But then the level is interrupted by them saying, you're needed elsewhere on the ring. There's a Falcon inbound to take you there. Like, you don't even repel the Covenant, you just leave. And in the process of leaving, you get a Needler for the first time. It doesn't quite home onto targets as well as the games, nor have quite the explosive super combined visual effects, but otherwise works as you would expect. A little weird that they'd have you fight a Hunter with a Needler, though. Level 4, Ice Canyon. This level starts with Raven Squad saying, the Covenant let something dangerous loose on the ring. We all know what that is, the Flood. And it makes sense as to why you suddenly get pulled out of the last level and thrown into completely unknown things. As for the level itself, it is using Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary's assets from Assault in the Control Room and two Betrayals. And yeah, you finally get to fight the Flood. The introduction to the Flood is on the Falcon you flew in on. But of course, it gets taken down. Who could have seen that coming? But hey, you get the pistol! which uses the Halo Reach M6G model instead of Combat Evolve's M6D model. In theory, it could make sense that an ODST would have this. You did just come from Reach to the Pillar of Autumn, but in Combat Evolved, you only ever saw the M6D model, so that's a little weird that they would do this. I mean, they're already using Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary's assets everywhere, so I would figure they'd just use that. Anyway, it kind of doesn't really matter because it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> This is not the hand cannon we know. It is pretty weak and really not that good. But hey, Chief is back. Oh shit. And that was his second and last cameo in the game. Okay, so if you know me, you know I hate Flood gameplay wise. I find them incredibly dull compared to the Covenant and their cool lore doesn't make up for the fact that they just play like space zombies. However, in this game, they're quite fun. Using numbers to overwhelm the player is a legit method of increasing tension in an on-a-rail shooter, so it works well. And you also get all of the different flood types from Halo 3 during the events of Halo CE, which is wild. And of course, this level ends with you bailing out, the flood being too much to overcome, which, yeah, they're the flood. Level 5, 
Raven Down. Raven Down starts with you crashing onto Halo Reach's Forge World. I mean, those are definitely Forge assets at the very least. The whole point of this level was just surviving until the Pelican picks you up. Not really a whole lot to say about this level. You're fighting the enemies you've already seen combined with the Flood all while using guns you've already seen so far. A new mini boss does pop up in the form of Juggernauts. This is really cool because Juggernauts were only found in unused files of Halo 2. They never made their way into any Halo game until Fireteam Raven. They play more or less the same as the Hunter mini boss, but with more health and they just smack you instead. It's a solid level through and through, resulting in you finally escaping on a Pelican. And level six, the final level, Last Stand is exactly that. Raven Squad gets the news that Master Chief intends to blow up the ring, killing everyone and everything with it. As Raven Squad puts it, this is a one-way mission. I'm not really sure when they would have gotten this news. I'm pretty sure Chief was acting on his own and not really communicating with anyone else or no one else is left as far as they knew at that point. Regardless, Raven Squad's task is to defend Chief who is in the same Banshee you see him crash at the beginning of the Maw. You need to take down a Scarab so that it both doesn't shoot down Chief and doesn't make it to the Pillar of Autumn. Okay, hold on. I have to take a step back here. We are fighting a Halo 3 Scarab on a Halo 4 level during the events of Halo Combat Evolved. Man, this game breaks my mind. Anyway, this is the most chaotic level of them all, the climax of the entire game, throwing everything it has at you, ultimately fighting on said Scarab before taking it down. At this point, Raven Squad nobly accepts death as they've completed their mission. This is kind of just a retread of Halo Reach's Lone Wolf, but you know what? I'm okay with that, it still works. A really cool attention to detail is that the glowing rings that go all the way around the cabinet turn off when the ring explodes in game. And that's just neat. All in all, this game will take about 45 minutes to complete its story and roughly should eat up just shy of about $20 worth of tokens. By arcade standards, that's not terrible. By realistic standards, that's quite a bit of money to dump into one cabinet for a single playthrough. Is it worth it? Well, I think for your first time playthrough, it's definitely worth it for the novelty. After that, I would probably only use one or two tokens and that would be it. I still love that this exists just because it's such a neat project. I've seen multiple people classify Raven Squad as a failure, and I don't understand. I'm sure there was money behind the scenes between Microsoft and Dave and Busters. I mean, it is supposed to be an exclusive to their arcades. So of course, less people got a chance to play it, their arcade cabinets only at Dave and Busters for the most part. And from my experience, they're actually a lot of fun. The best way I could describe this game is that Fireteam Raven feels like what it would be if you could play Halo Reach's cutscenes. My takeaway, however, is something entirely different. The thing it made me ask was, why isn't Microsoft getting more into VR? I know this seems totally random, but my mind connects a light rail gun arcade game to full on VR. And the reason I'm mainly confused by this is because Microsoft has already dumped a bunch of time and money into VR. My first VR headset was a Samsung Odyssey Plus. That sort of technology could be sold for about $200 and did sell for less than that on sale. Microsoft is the only company right now that is currently in position to profit off of VR reasonably. Imagine if Microsoft made a AAA Halo VR game, put it on Xbox and PC VR, and made those headsets work with Xbox. You are now putting games on the Xbox, PC VR, and competing with PS VR in a much more reasonable price range. Why Microsoft doesn't do this? I have no idea. Part of me is saying this just because I really like VR and I want more VR games and I want more people to get into VR, but most of me is saying this because it just seems so obvious. For most companies, they don't get into VR because there's just not enough money in it. But Microsoft is in a very unique situation where there is money to be had there. Anyway, side tangent over, back to Raven Squad, Really cool cabinet. If you're near any Dave & Busters, I would highly recommend trying it out. This video is quite a bit different, so I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I don't usually make videos at arcades. Huge thanks to my YouTube members. These guys get to see my videos at least one week ahead of time and get weekly shoutouts. And of course, big thanks to everyone that joins me over on Twitch. Hanging out is pretty fun. Click the link in the bottom right if you guys wanna follow me over there. If you wanna follow me on Twitter, my tag is in the bottom left. It's Jarek underscore dragon. Thank all of you guys for watching this video and I'll see you next time.